Don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed him. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinking Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that some bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, haha? -ha. No, Steve. The other kind of funny. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Now, shoot that some bitch! Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. They're coming from the rear. I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. As the governor of New Mexico was paying for the kid's apprehension, Garrett was able to hire every gun hand in Lincoln County. Garrett. Garrett's men were running around Come like on. a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. Still, one of them reached the water tower. Not a bad idea. It would be a turkey shoot from up there. Luckily, these shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few bucks. Then, I heard a friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back door! We'll cover you! Truth be told, Stand things weren't much better behind Watch the house. I cut their numbers in half, but that just made the ones that were left twice as mad. They made up for their lack of skill with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. It was a bit of a slog but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. And like that, you I was inside, dead, you none the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave, and Get upstairs here, I found Billy track. and Charlie Baldry.
Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo. Grab a gun and get to the window. Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. Telling you Garrett's men were dropping like flies, but they just kept on. Where the hell Garrett get to? That's when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Garrett. Get to the other side. Damn ears are ringing. I don't know how many of those cocksuckers I personally put down, but it was pretty clear, even to Billy, that maybe discretion was the better part of balance. What's that mean? It means that it was time to cut and run. They got a gallon, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them round back. I'll draw their attention. He directed that order at me. And I thought, why the hell do I have to do? But I went anyway. Dumbass that I was back then. Many would have fled in my fight. But I had that false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack here. What are you saying, old man? Jack is just joshing with you. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, uh, where was I? You were heading for the barn. Gonna cut you a new one! Ah! Right. Making my way past the castle of Fallen Boat. Sounds like Garrett hired a whole regiment of hired guns. Yeah. And just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless <clears throat> bastards would pop up. <laughs> Finally, I had the stables within my reach. And that's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked-on tin star. You read that in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. In a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that penny dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn stables. I stepped inside and BAM! <gasps> Last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on, how did it end? End? Boy, that was just the beginning. So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? Yeah, after I came to, a bastard had clocked me with his colt. Hey, 
and the kid surrendered? When he realized there was no getting out of there alive. So they locked you up in Lincoln? Indeed they did. Sentenced me to hang right along with the kid. It's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang, and they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window, and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? Hell yeah. That scatter gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim to that. The kids escaped raised a huge ruckus. Guards were everywhere looking for him. Can't let the kid get away. Ah! Oh my God! Anybody see him? I had to jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up in arms. And suddenly, I was a fugitive. So that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever gonna find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy and sneak my way past. You! But hell if they weren't all waiting for me. <clears throat> Apparently some of them thought I was Billy. See, me and the kid shared a certain similarity in build and coloring. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean-ass shotgun. We can take him. So much lead was whizzing by my head, it was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. I knew I needed to find a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beast. We prize him too high, if you ask me. But where was the kid while you were busy getting shot at? Gone. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. So I could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. Meanwhile, <clears throat> Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean-ass shotgun. Anyway, it was me or them, and the only way forward led me straight to perdition. But the cards were dealt, and I had no choice but to play them. If 
Finally, I found what I was looking for. The stables on the edge of town. I guess Billy saved your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob, I said. I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. Not with my shotgun. So we stood there in the middle of the street, eyeball to eyeball. He intended to kill me, and I knew I had no choice but to defend myself. I killed him in a fair fight. Everybody saw I had no damn choice. Well, Lincoln got a might depopulated that day. That Garrett gunned down Billy three months later, so his escape was all for naught anyway. So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. Until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the Cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious, Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clanton himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them hombres on. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys. So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for old man Clown. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! Get cut up. I did my best to help those poor passengers. Get out of here! Oh. Moments later, the attackers were dead. And I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks were in hiding more bandits. Was that all of them? Or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attack from on high like Apache's off. They would appear in great numbers from above and rain down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground, whatever else they had. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere, and there never seemed to be an end to it. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. See, at the time, I was still pretty green and would often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was the cowboy. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong, and I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to fight my way past these other assholes first. Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. 
Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed easy. Look, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. I ran ahead, as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be if Clanton and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking, going up against a gang like this? I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven, I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. Bat Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good, and he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune evened the odds and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. Time. All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done running. The old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins. I yelled out at the top of my lungs. Clinton, I'm coming for you! A little stealth might have made more sense, to be perfectly honest. Because that old fool had a Gatling gun and enough bullets to last him till kingdom come. But I knew I could not let that deter me. Not if I was to find and kill Ringo. I needed to get that old man off that gun. Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon. But it was just me. Cowboys made it out of there alive and told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps. And that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the old K Corral. A few weeks after that dust up at the OK Corral, I was still after Johnny Ringo. I had tracked him and the cowboys to their hideout at a sawmill, and they were loaded for bear. So what exactly did Johnny Ringo do to piss you off? Well, him and that other bastard. 
Roscoe Bob Bryant? Yep. They both deserve to die, and I promise I'll tell you why. But first I need to tell you about the cowboy's new boss, Curly Bill Brocious. Herb's coming! Get ready, boys. Curly Bill took charge of the cowboys upon the old man's demise. And after that gunfight at the OK Corral, the Plantons wanted revenge. So they murdered Morgan Earp and grievously wounded his older brother, Virgil. Wyatt and Doc went on what became known as the Vendetta Ride, hunting those outlaws down. So when I showed up, that's who they thought I was. There were killers around every corner, all wearing red bandanas. That's how the cowboys identified each other. And I was beginning to wish I had one myself. But I wasn't about to let Ringo walk away unscathed. And that's what drove me forward. They say that Ringo was infernally fast. I hardly saw anyone faster, boy. Certainly not Wyatt Earp. That man was all hat and no cap. Earp wasn't much of a match for him, but Doc Holliday might have taken him. That longer should have kept his nose out of it. They never charged anyone for the murder of Morgan Earp. But everybody knew that Curly shot him in the back. That was common knowledge. Yeah, maybe so. But Ringo had nothing to do with it. He was just being loyal to a friend. Is that what you call it? Being loyal. Well, to get to that loyal friend, I had to pass by some buzz saws as big as a man. Excuse me, sir. I have a question. What's that, Dwight? After old man Clinton died, why didn't his son take over the cowboys? Because I Clanton was dumber than a box of rocks and a yellow belly to boot. Now, where was I? Taking down the entire cowboy gang single-handed. Indeed I was, Jack. There were carts everywhere, piles of lumber, and God knows what else for people to hide behind. That really was one hell of a sawmill. Quite an impressive operation. And where was Curly Bill? Did you see him? I'm about to get to that, Ben. Patience. I'm painting a picture here. There was this beautiful waterfall and a crystal clear stream that led to a verdant valley that was truly... Consider your picture painted. What happened next? Well, finally the bastards that were still alive made a last stand. Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo, and his compadres oh. took off into the lumber yard, and I followed after. Saying they ran. Cowardice was not in Ringo nor Curly Bill's nature. No, sir. I never said they were running scared. They just wanted me out in the open. Brocious gave me no choice but to take his life. But Ringo was nowhere to be found. I knew you didn't kill Ringo, because he was found dead in a different location altogether. To this day, his killer is still unknown. Indeed. It took me a few months before I finally tracked his ass to West Turkey Creek Canyon. Sir, I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him.
Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. I was paid a healthy bounty for Ringo and Curly Bill, and realized there was real money to be made. That's why I went after Henry Plummer. Now wasn't he the sheriff who augmented his income by shaking down miners and robbing gold shipments? That's the one. Oh yeah, I remember him. He ran that gang of thieving outlaws called the Innocents. So it's true that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? Indeed I did, son. Indeed I did. I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting plumber looked like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plummer rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape, and that's where I thought I'd find him. As long as you don't light up a cigar, we'll... As my late father pointed out to me more than once, God made men. Samuel Colt made him equal. You or me? I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. There were thieves and killers, robbing travelers and hijacking gold shipments. Like those that ran with Plummer, some were just regular folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. James, who worked in the stable. Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's sons. Ordinary citizens who lived a double life. Stealing and thieving and murdering their neighbors. Of course, the rest were veterans of the Civil War. Stone cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. Plummer had a lot of men on his payroll. A hell of a lot. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand while stealing them blind with the other. He set up a defensive perimeter, which I had no idea how to breach. I was outnumbered and in way over my head, but I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize it. They must have thought I was tough. Or had some kind of death wish. Seeing as there were barrels of gunpowder everywhere. I thought I was some kind of hero. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine, but once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous as there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. Quick reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. You ain't beefing me. One wrong bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted too. And I freely admit that my plan of attack was not. 
not just moronic, but clearly in science. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder, a way into the mine from the opposite side. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I needed to make a leap of faith. Which ain't easy when you're suspended between heaven and hell. I was determined not to give up, however. <clears throat> that Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the Sheriff was up to, people were outraged. Well, that 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to helping me find old Bob. It made it my mission to settle that score from the high water. Plummer was a mad dog killer, and the people of Nevada City deserved better. Nevada City? Well, I thought Plummer met his maker in Bannock, Montana. Right, well, he was a sheriff of both places at one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. see right away that this was going to take some doing. Oh, no blood money for you today! Oh. Oh. So that's how Henry Plummer died. Him and his crew were worth their weight in gold. And now, I was officially a bounty hunter. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin, so that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Hardin as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. Hell. He killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody, not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. I dodged death many a time, and that night in Abilene was... <gasps> I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob and collecting the bounty on John Wesley. Uh, I thought the Texas Rangers got heart. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they want you to believe. It was cold in a witch's tit and a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres to the very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me, and... Wait, I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? 
John Wesley Harden was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. He was a bona fide folk hero by then, and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. Shit, it's cold out here. Oh, damn it! Shoot that son of a bitch! They didn't ask why I was there. They knew. As most of them were wanted as well. I figured Harden was here somewhere, but to get to him, I'd have to get past his gun hands. And that was easier said than done, as most of them were as foolish and full of bravado as I was. I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Harden wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest friends. Harden's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. Some were hightailing it into town to inform their jefe of my unwelcomed presence. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration. I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Suffice it to say, nobody there was happy to see me. In fact, I felt a certain hostility. I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. I felt a bolt of adrenaline, or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. Stood in Grease Lightning, but being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon, just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, did you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. <laughs> Bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high they tickled the nether regions of heaven. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony. 
and the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution and were more than willing to die for him. They saw me before I saw them. It was rugged country, the winter home of the Cherokawas, and that's why they had retreated there. I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did. But then again, I got a lot of those. Did you find Grey Wolf? Not at that moment, but I did find the entrance to their hiding. A deep crevice that led to a deeper cave. Don't tell me you went in there. Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure, angry cussedness. See, back then, I had a stubborn streak a mile wide, and I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit. They had torches on the walls. How big was this cave? Big as hell, Ben. Chiricahua had hid out there during the Indian War. They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? To be honest, I was more concerned with the live ones than the dead ones. How come you know so much about engines? A few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Religion is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. I haven't seen them since. No, I mean, what happened with Grey Wolf? I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows. And I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart. And if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. As his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again and kill many more men, and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. A soul would have no rainbow. <laughs> He said I was a great warrior, a coyote man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom poisons your heart, and an echo of the song of the dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there was definitely snakes. And indeed, his warriors surrounded me and attacked me like hungry wolverine. <clears throat> they couldn't stop me, though, and Grey Wolf wasn't in the mood for idle talk. I swear I couldn't see any way out of this trap. But suddenly, one just appeared. Kinda like a mirror. I felt like I would be lost in that damn cave forever. Finally, I found myself back outside, perched on the edge of a precipice overlooking a thundering white water river. To get where I was going required several leaps of faith, but no way in hell I was turning back. I chased after him, determined to make him explain the meaning of all that mumbo jumbo. Mumbo Jumbo is right. Are you making this all up as you go? 
A few details may be fuzzy, brother, but I am relating exactly what happened to me. There were dozens of Apache warriors aiming at me from on high. Dozens? Well, maybe not dozens, but there was a lot of... At least three or four. Well, more than that, little lady. I had a steep climb up creek ahead of me and scrambled up those rocks like a mountain goat. I was determined to locate Grey Wolf and find out exactly what the hell he was trying to tell me. And wouldn't you know it, that crafty son of a bitch led me right into a trap. What kind of trap? Well, son, there had to be at least a hundred Apaches surrounding me. A hundred? God be my witness. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? Hey, I believe you. Come on, tell us how it ended. All right, but I'm not gonna drag this out. Where were we? You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of them. And in the end, a path appeared before me that I had not seen before. I followed it as I desperately needed to find out what Grey Wolf was trying to tell me. But it was like that some of bitch disappeared into thin air. Never did find him. And never did collect my goddamn bounty. Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem, uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of the right? I did my best, sir. We all did. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. <sighs> You see, the dogs got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. Story was Bob Dalton's girl was always writing him about how he had no ambition. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Put some holes in them! The brothers paid dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months, now they finally had him dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. <sighs> this man had no intention of letting the Daltons slip away. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. Oh, they'll give up eventually. We just gotta wait for something bitches out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting.
from above. Fortunately, a water tower was right there. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It was brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Jim Boo, Davy Crockett, Son of a bitch! The Alamo. Over there! That Silas Greaves! What the hell? came away victorious, taking down those thieving dolphins. His name was Silas Greaves, and when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. It was early evening, not high noon. The Daltons blew up a safe, and were all set to hightail it out of there. I was late to the party, and Coffeeville was already up in arms. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. Tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. Thank you. And finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends in Coffee Bill. Hey, you got us the evil. What's the rules in them? Those friends came after me like a pack of wild dogs. Tooth and nail. They were coming at me from all directions. I caught sight of the Daltons running with the money and didn't want to lose them. The problem was, they knew the count better than I did. Those boys. And to top it Shoot off, I found myself in the middle of another this. shootout entirely. Get out of here. Did the Daltons hold up in somebody's off. house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the Daltons. And they were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Daltons. Which wasn't any surprise, because those two families have been feuding forever. And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smith, pissing off the Heimhoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Well, bullets were flying every which way as all the old feuds in Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in Coffeeville that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. The Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plant me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. It was Emmett, the youngest, and he decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid of you, Silas Greaves. This is where it is for you. He was determined to protect his brothers. I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. You ain't getting by me, Greaves. Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? Uh, 
But I have to admit, that boy had grit. We'll get those suckers! It took me a couple of days to track the Daltons down. They can't get away with this! And in that time, a whole posse of local vigilantes offered to lend a hand. We'll track them to the ends of the earth. They seemed as determined as me to find those outlaws. But as we headed into those swamps, it was like I had my own private army. There was no way those boys were getting away this time. It was early fall, right? Beautiful time of year. At least you had the weather on your side. Not by my recollection. It was damp and foggy as hell. It was tough to stay on a true course, so we kept an eye out for landmarks. It was autumn. The maple trees were in full color, red as blood. The rains that year were torrential, so the whole area was flooded. The vigilantes had spread out wide, and pretty soon I couldn't see anybody. Bury them in the swamp! You tell them where they stand! Except for some son of bitches ahead of me wanting to do me harm, so I had to face them alone. I wondered why my compatriots didn't come running when they heard the shots. So did you find the Daltons? Not yet. But I did have the question of pleasure of meeting a few of their friends. The boys had established quite a reputation by that time, so they attracted all manner of riffraff to their cause. But luckily, a barn materialized as if right before my eyes. I scrambled up top to get a better view. But I just ended up falling inside. So, how did you get out? The barn doors was open. About right then, I saw some suspicious characters running through the bushes. Of course, I followed them. But that goddamn swamp was like a goddamn maze, and pretty soon I had no goddamn idea where I was. Steve? So I just started walking, and pretty soon I... Steve? Steve? Huh? Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm listening. Indians surrounded me from all sides. Yeah. Indians? They were Indians? No. I just wanted to make sure Steve was paying attention. Now, where was I? You were following the Daltons through a swamp? That's right. See, Steve? Dwight's paying attention. No, oh, I'm listening. I, I, I was just uh, resting my eyes. So, where was I? The Daltons. Right. See, there's a reason so many outlaw gangs are made up of brothers. Being a brother is a very sacred Bounty thing. Hunters. It's Stop a bond like a bitch. So did you ever find the damn Daltons? Not yet. But I did find a few of their cousins. You Kansans breed like rabbits. More Smiths or Heimhoffers or who knows what. But hell, what's more important than family? I bet Ben knows what I'm talking about. And that's when I saw it. A goddamn steamboat. A steamboat? In a swamp? Yeah, Steve, but this wasn't much more than a wreck, really. But how'd a damn steamboat end up in the swamps? Yes, it floated off during the flood of 89. Now, was it a stern wheeler or, or a side wheeler? What, what? 
Does that really make a difference, Steve? It was a steamboat with a goddamn army on board. It was in that a fusillade of bullets come raining down from our house. And those vigilantes who accompanied me weren't anywhere to be found. But among those men that were shooting at me, I thought I saw some familiar faces. Sounds like you don't give up too easy. That's the kind of man I am, Ben. I set out to do something. I do it. Surrender just ain't in my nature. Plus, I'm stubborn as hell. Right about then, much to my relief, the vigilantes finally arrived. Their leader motioned at a cabin in the middle of the top deck, pointing me directly at the Daltons. I finally had them, after months of dogged pursuit. Huh? But it turned out that they had me. Take him out! I'm sending you to hell! The Daltons had played That's me so like a fiddle. All, Apparently, the vigilantes were on their damn payroll. They didn't just want to shoot me. They wanted to burn me alive. But finding my way out of a burning labyrinth proved to be quite a challenge. It was a riverboat, right? I mean, it's not like it was a goddamn ocean liner. Well, yeah, but I was Did in a fight. Did you hear about that ship that's been launched next year? Largest one in the world. Um, you're well, talking about the Titanic. If you ask me, it's too blessed to so anyway... Don't be stupid, Steve. They know what they're doing. They say that the Titanic is unsinkable. Oh, God. But getting back to that steamboat, how did you get off it, Mr. Breeze? I took in a lot of smoke that day, so I admit my recollection might be a bit hazy. But somehow I managed to finally disembark. I was coughing up smoke and pretty damn piss. I was done playing games with those boys. It was time to settle this once and for all. Bob and Grad weren't about to come at me one at a time. They were in this together. Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. Confident that this time the odds were on their side. got it wrong. A sad end for those two. If they'd only known that Emmett was still alive despite his wounds. Paroled 14 years later, he moved to California and sold real estate and lived off the legend of that fateful day. And the tragic death of his two brothers. My own brothers died tragically as well, truth be told. It was 1868, and me and my older brothers were pulling a tidy profit running cattle into Juarez, Mexico. One night after my brothers retired for the evening, I found a little poker game in a cantina with a couple of cowboys. And I just couldn't lose. I even won an old Spanish coin that had to be a hundred years old. Well. I was mighty pleased with myself the next morning as my brothers and I rode for Texas. But before we crossed the border, those cowboys caught up with us. It was Johnny Ringo, Roscoe Bob Bryant, and another asshole named Jim. They wanted their money back and everything else we had, including our lives, as those boys didn't want us coming for them later. Bob put that old Spanish coin in my mouth and said, I won't have it said that I left you with nothing, boy. Well, those horses bolted, and there we hung as those bastards rode away. The branch finally snapped under the weight of the three of us, but me and my older brothers were bigger and heavier. They were already dead. And right then, I swore to myself that I would avenge them. Ringo, you know about. 
But Bob eluded me. Until I heard he was riding with the Wild Bunch. I'd been on their trail for months. Ever since they left their hideout in the Bighorn Mountains. Led by Butch Cassidy. They were a loose association of outlaws who robbed banks and trains from Colorado to Montana. Among them was the Sundance Kid, and that murderous hombre I was tracking, Roscoe Bob Bryant. Were you a part of that giant Pinkerton posse after the Wild Bunch? No, boy. A circus like that would have slowed me down. Besides, I wanted Bryant all to myself. I'd heard about a large shipment of gold being transported to Wilcox, Wyoming on the Overland Flyer. I figured the Wild Bunch would likely hit such a treasure, and by God, I figured right. They blew the bridge with the intention of forcing the train to stop. Well, I assumed the Wild Bunch was likely in the still intact part of the train high above. I was determined to make that some bitch Bob pay for what he did to my brothers. ringing from blowing up that bridge. What'd you say? I can't hear a gun. Uh, well, shit. I made my way off unscathed screen. and came what upon a few hell? members of the gang and had no choice but to dispatch them. From there, I had to negotiate an even more precarious route. Oh. But first, I would need to get my ass out of there. jumped from the frying pan into the fire as the train was clearly fixing to fall. I had found the gang, but in order to find old Bob, I needed to fight my way forward past a whole passel of desperados. Outside, inside, any way I could, I made my way towards my prey. Well, what about the passengers? It was mostly a freight train, as I recall. There were no passengers aboard that day. As I mentioned before, I am not fond of heights. But I was too busy dodging bullets to worry about falling to my death. Odds were I was likely to die that day anyway. So I was determined to take down as many of those bastards as I could. I kept hoping the law would show up and give me a hand. You mean like that giant Pinkerton posse that I read about? Did they come riding in, guns a blazing to help? Help? From the Pinkertons? <laughs> no, son. I had to fight the Wild Bunch all by my lonesome, as usual. Who the hell is that? My guess is those dime novels didn't portray this as it happened, did they? Only a few stragglers were left, and I had to cut them down pronto if I was going to stay on old Bob's trail. Once I silenced all those guns, I went searching for my nemesis, determined to finally have my justice.
but the only survivor who welcomed me was George Flatnose Curry. Who was he? The fastest gun in the gang. Right after Sundance, I mean. And Kid Curry, and maybe Elsie Lay. Though some folks might dispute that. On that very same day, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid decided to leave the Wild Bunch behind and decamp for South America. They ended up living down there for many years, but I'm sure you already know all about that. I tried to find Bob Bryant, but it was as if he'd disappeared. Sometime later, I heard the Wild Bunch was back together. Kid Curry escaped from jail, and now he was running the whole shebang. So I took to their trail, as I was still in pursuit of my brother's killer and hoped that he was back with him. Don't let him hear you saying that. Anyways, I tracked those boys to a camp right outside Parachute, Colorado. Being outnumbered, I didn't bother with the head shot. I just started taking those bastards down. Old Bob wasn't among them, and either was Kid Curry. I could sense him close by, however, plotting something nasty. I just needed a clue as to their whereabouts. And I found one. A map with their bold plan clearly marked. This time they were fixing to blow up a train trestle. Property of the Union Pacific. The plan clearly indicated how they were fixing to undermine several of the weakest wooden supports. Kid Curry was considered the wildest of the wild bunch. It was said that he fathered 85 bastard children. Though some say it was only five. <clears throat> Kid Curry had bragged to a whore how he was gonna rob a train heading to the U.S. Mint in Denver. And that whore, Fat Sally, she told me. The bridge was rigged with dynamite. So I decided I'd best be careful confronting those bastards. And I made it a point to remove any dynamite that I came across. A moment later, I saw a ladder that somehow had escaped my attention. Don't you blow us up now. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. The Wild Bunch did not take kindly to my presence and attempted to blow my head off. It appeared the kid had found a number of new recruits to bolster their ranks. Yes, there's always desperate men willing to trade their lives for stolen treasure. What happened next? Well, having removed the first bundle of dynamite, I decided I might as well remove the other one. Once that was done, I figured I'd find my way from there. So, what happened then? I had to remove more of that damn dynamite. It must have been terrifying trying to make your way across. I was sweating it a bit, but then I noticed a footbridge tied up on high, so I shot the rope. So that was all the dynamite? Well, funny you should mention that, darling. As actually there was a fourth charge impeding my progress. Once I removed it, my path was pretty clear. So I proceeded onward, 
and realized that that way just wasn't going to work. I needed an alternate path forward. Luckily, I found a cave, and as I made my way back to the bridge, I saw something that concerned me. It was a long, burning fuse, and it was moving fast as hell. I had to catch it. The burning fuse was so damn quick, I had to run like the wind. I almost had it, but no! I thought I was gonna have a coronary when I lost sight of those sparks. My heart was pounding like a sledgehammer. I knew that failure meant boom! Then, finally, at the last moment. Whew. Of course, I was successful, or clearly I wouldn't be talking to you folks here today. Naturally, I removed the last dynamite charge. Well, it was a touching reunion. But by this time, I was thoroughly exhausted and dragging my ass as I was not a young man anymore. <clears throat> Kill that Azuki! Make him bleed! Send him to Purdue! Finally, I found those boys. Or more precisely, they found me. This crazy man keep going past me! Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, Kid Curry opened up on me with a goddamn Gatling gun. It was hidden in this tunnel and pretty well shielded. Kid Curry himself. He had decided to stop pussyfooting around and deal with me personally. as he was. I was just a bit faster. And as he lay wounded, I demanded to know the whereabouts of Roscoe Bob Bryant. He shouted at me. Is that what this is about? Bob went with Butch and Sundance to South America. You ain't never finding him. <laughs> Those were his last words. So, uh, Bob Bryant got away? I knew I'd never find him in South America. What about the other killer? Yeah, you kinda glossed over that one. Well, I found Jim, not long after my showdown with Ringo. At the time, he was riding with the James Younger gang. Did I neglect to mention that? Jesse James? The greatest outlaw who ever lived? Jesse and his kin rolled with Quantrill when he raided Lawrence, Kansas and killed near 200 people, boy. Ah, nothing great about that. And from there, him and his brother went on to rob banks and trains from Kansas to Missouri. Which is why there was such a rich bounty on their heads. Forty grand for both of them, dead or alive. 
That's one hell of a payday. Huh? I confronted them as they were robbing a train. Bullets were flying at me from every which way. But I knew I'd have to fight my way forward if I was going to find this gym. Now wait a second. How'd they stop this train in the first place? Well, the James boys were experts at this. They hopped a freight train, having heard there was a big payroll in the express safe. So, I hopped the same train. The James Younger gang was decimated after that little fiasco they had in Northfield, Minnesota. So Jesse needed more men and took on the killer I was after, along with a host of others. I was hoping to find my man and put a bullet in his head. <laughs> Climbing around that train, I must have swallowed a hundred damn bugs before I the reached James that... James Younger gang pulled the first train robbery west of the Mississippi. Sounds like you hold them in high <gasps> regard. Everyone knows they were the most famous outlaw gang ever. And you took them all on by your lonesome. Again. I'm finding this all real hard to swallow, friend. Well, maybe you need to wash it down with some whiskey. By the way, did I mention that that train was flying down those tracks like a bat out of hell? Anyway, excuse me, Ben. Where would I find the gentleman's facilities? Suddenly I have an urgent need to drain my one-eyed snake. Well, I've had more than a few drinks, and uh, I've been sitting here for quite a spell. <laughs> right through there. Let me show you. I never heard so much malarkey in my life. Uh, you think he's bullshitting us? You don't think he's Silas Greaves? I think he's just some old drunk looking for some free liquor. I don't know, Jack. I think I believe him. You don't think he met Jesse James? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That story makes no sense at all. Jack. I mean, you gotta be two bricks short of a load to believe that cock and bull story. I don't agree. Huh? Jack, lay off the ball. You seriously think that tired old man went toe to toe with Jesse James? <laughs> well, that's better. Did I mention that this Jim was married to the infamous Bell Star? Of course, I didn't learn that until later. Anyway, I made my way forward the best I could. Around the side, over the roof. At some point, some somebody saw me and shouted out, It's a damn Pinkerton! It's a damn Pinkerton! Now, I never worked for that limey cocksucker, but I guess they assumed I was one of his assassins. Those evil bastards firebombed Jesse's mother's house and killed his stepbrother. So it's no wonder each and every asshole on that train wanted me dead. Everybody's always mistaking you for somebody else, aren't they? Why is that, I wonder? Don't rightly know, Jack. I'm just telling you how I remember. I came across a flat car piled high with logs and had to come up with a creative way to make my way forward. I wondered if I was ever going to find the front of that train, or the bastard I was after. Right about then, I was attacked by some asshole on a Gatlin gun. Well, yeah, seems like you run into a lot of them. Asshole? Gatlin guns. Yes, I did. Now, I don't remember how I took it out. It was either a bullet or dynamite. I was looking for Jim and shooting any son of a bitch stupid enough to get in my way. And that included Jesse James himself. It was then that Jesse detached the express car from the rest of the damn train. 
I could see Jesse waiting for me. Fixing to kill me so he could get away with all that money. You had a showdown with Jesse James? Of course he didn't. Everybody knows that Jesse was killed by Bob Ford. Yeah. Jesse went out like John Wesley Harden. Coward shot him in the back of the head. Guess it doesn't matter how far you run, does it, Ben? Your past always catches up with you. Yeah, I didn't kill Jesse James. Just wounded him bad enough to convince him to hang up his guns. What about that Jim fella? What happened to him? I figure he was up front with a gun to the engineer's head. That bastard slipped away again. I'll tell you how I got him. But first, I need to whip my whistle. After my showdown with Jesse, I continued to track his brother, Frank, and that son of a bitch Jim. I followed those bastards into the high mountains as they were going to ground. What mountains would that be? Somewhere in the Ozarks, I believe. The perfect place to hide out from the authorities. In fact, before I could find them, some Indians who fled the res and were hiding out from the military found me first. They probably thought I was a cavalry scout and didn't want me telling the military where they were. Engines? Yeah, they, they could have been that Cheyenne, but there was all sorts of renegades roaming the landscape. Right there. Hey, how about another whiskey, Ben? Nothing better to soothe the troubled soul. Now, where was I? Indians, right. I had more than my share of run-ins with the Red Man. Like that time... Did I tell you about Grey Wolf? Yes, sir. You did. Ah, of course I did. In fact, I can still remember that old medicine man's words to me. Jesus Christ, we're back to that oh. again. You carry great darkness in your heart. It will claim your soul. You will come to this place again and kill many more men and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything you are. So, did you ever find it? Who? The man you are after. Let me ask you something, Ben. You ever think about death? Mr. Graves, are you all right? Ooh, dear. Oh, dear. Won't you spare me over to another year? What is this that I can't see with eyes cold hands taking hold of me? Well, I am death, none can excel. I'll open the door to heaven or hell. Oh, death, someone would pray. Could you wait to call me another day? Oh, death, oh, to spare me over to another year. So are you gonna answer the question? What question is that? Jim Reed. Did you ever find him? Reed was indeed that son of bitch's surname. That's right, Ben. A despicable character. I remember him laughing like a hyena that cold morning they lynched me and my brothers. He was intent on avoiding my vengeance, but nothing was gonna stop me. Nothing.
finally did track those outlaws down. They had long rifles with scopes and were well positioned to pick off any poor soul who came anywhere close. I'm guessing Frank James believed I was responsible for the demise of his brother Jesse. I couldn't really disagree with the man as I thought Jesse was dead then as well. Hell, I can't fault Frank for wanting his revenge as I was there for the same damn reason myself. At this point, I'm guessing you think Silas Graves is a worse murderer than Jim Reed ever was. No, sir. It was a pitched battle that could have gone either way. Luckily, I had some dynamite in my possession. Dynamite? On your person? A few sticks, just in case. It's always good to be prepared. Right. I'm just laying out the facts as I remember hey, them, Jack. That son of a bitch! Take him out! He's just one man! Old shack? Well, it went tumbling right off that cliff. With Frank James still in it? Yes, sir. But Frank James is still alive, living in Missouri, showing folks around the family farm for 25 cents a tour. I didn't say he died in the fall, now did I? I'm done with this damnable outlaw life! Kill me, don't kill me, do what you will! At this point, I just don't give a shit. I explained to Frank that I had nothing against him personally and that I was looking for someone else. You want Reed? Have at him. I never did like that bastard. I am done here. We parted in peace as Frank pointed out the path to my prey before making his way back down the hill. So, what happened with Reed? Well, I finally found the last of the gang hiding in a nearby cave. First, I had to dispatch the lookout, as I was determined not to let that murderer escape my revenge again. But rather than wander in willy-nilly, I decided it would be better to smoke that some bitch out. Hey, Reed! I shouted. No wonder you're so ornery! Can't be easy being married to Belle Star. While you're off providing for the family, she's spreading her legs for every Tom, Dick, and Cole Younger. Not an attractive woman exactly, but very friendly. At least she was to me. Son of a bitch! It was then that the last bunch of bandits jumped out of hiding. Why won't this asshole give up? Would someone please kill him? Eventually, it was just me and Reed. I had waited a long time to face him down, so I could repay him for what he did to my brothers. Pay him, I did. Well, I don't know about you boys, but I'm pretty beat. Well, it's too damn bad you never found that Bob character. Seems a shame he never had to pay. Well, funny thing about that. I did have one more chance at him. Six months ago, I heard that Butch and Sundance were back in the States and had gathered up some of their old gang. I tracked them down, hoping that Roscoe Bob Bryant had returned with them. So, you're saying they didn't die down in Bolivia? That's what I'm saying. Forty years I had waited to get my hands on the last of my brother's killers. Not even an army of demons could have stopped me now. Both Johnny Ringo and Jim Reed fell fairly quickly. But the last one, Roscoe Bob Bryant. 
That son of a bitch had managed to escape my vengeance time and time again. I couldn't even be certain I'd recognize him after all those years. By now, he had to be close to 70. But for all you know, he could have been dead. That thought had indeed crossed my mind. As did others. For instance, did my thirst for vengeance turn me into something worse than the man I was after? By this point in my storied career, I had killed more men than Bob Bryant ever had. I was furious as hell at that bastard for making me who I am. A man with no family, no friends, no purpose except shooting Bob Bryant dead. Nothing could stop me from taking his life. I'd been after that killer forever. From the time I rode with Billy the Kid. But that chapter of my story you already know. Chapter of that fairy tale, you mean? Suddenly it was 1910. There I was, an old man roaming a ghost town dead almost two decades. The town was falling apart. Just like me. Even though the ghosts of my dead brothers were begging me to end what I started so long ago. Mr. Graves, are you all right? Would you like some water? The Wild Bunch knew I was there. They were after a treasure they had hidden before they fled, buried in the grave of a dead amigo. Some folks think the town is haunted, so they figured there wouldn't be many people poking around. I intended to fill that grave with Bob Ryan's corpse. But like I said, the bandits knew I was on to them. They lured me in and hit me with everything they had. But you obviously prevailed since you're sitting here telling us the tale. Actually, in that moment, I did not prevail. So I suppose we're talking to a ghost. Funny you should put it like that, Jack. Because when I woke up... Uh, from the dead? There was silence all around me. I could swear to God I saw Billy then. Billy who? Billy the Kid. William Bonney. He was shooting at me from a rooftop. Here, there, even over there. So I am right, you are titched in the head. Mr. Greaves, perhaps we should switch you to coffee? You see that old Indian again, too? No, but I did see Billy's killer, Patrick Floyd Garrett. He came at me, guns a blazing. But I knew that old war horse had died two years before. I wondered if maybe I was dead too and confronting the ghosts of my past. Perhaps all my sins were coming back to haunt me and, and drag me down to perdition. But no ghost army was stopping me. Uh, my father-in-law got hit with a fallen branch. He spent the rest of his life talking to dogs. Newman Hayes Clanton, William Brocious, John Peters Ringo, they all wanted me dead. Guardians of the Garden of the Dead. George Curry and Harvey Logan, alias Kid Curry, both thirsty for vengeance from the Great Beyond.
Jesse, Woodson, James, and Jim Reed. Each one deader than the next. I thought I would go crazy. Thought? saw Harry Alonzo Longobar. The Sundance Kid? Like a general leading his Legion of the Dead. You told us before that you seemed alive. He was alive. A voice called to me from afar. It was Robert Leroy Parker, aka Butch Cassidy, coming at me from out of the fog. Thanks for taking care of that bastard. But the kid wasn't quite deceased. Not yet. Takes more than one little bullet to kill the likes of me, partner. Those two looked like they hadn't seen each other for quite a while. Clearly, they were no longer amigos. Shit. I was hoping I wouldn't have to kill you. You won't have to, Butch. I'm killing you first. I asked him about Bob Bryant. But they were too busy with their own heated conversation. Let me get this shit straight. You want my money and the love of my life? You frittered it all away, Butch. It is mine. And so is that damn money. I didn't want to shoot anybody until I had an answer to my question. But those boys didn't give me much of a choice. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid died there in that cemetery not six months ago. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid were killed by the Bolivian Army. Everybody knows that. That's the legend, but it ain't the truth. So, uh, you never found Bob? There is no Bob. This old some bitch ain't even Silas Greaves. Sir, is that true? Have you been pulling our legs this whole time? Well, not the whole time. Oh man, I think you've worn out your welcome here. Maybe you're right, Jack. Maybe it's time to pay. You see, Ben, or should I say Bob, your past always catches up with you. I, I was a different man back then, crazy. Drinking, I, I've changed my ways, I swear to you. If I could turn back the clock, I... But you can't, Bob. Why'd you toy with me like that? Telling those tales, knowing all along... Why not just lay your cards on the table? Here. I won't have it said that I left you with nothing. That's how you want it? 
So be it. Holy shit! Relax, Molly. Move against that wall. Go! Did you know it was him all along? Cassidy told me Bob was in Abilene before he died. But I wasn't sure Ben was my man until he revealed how much he knew about Ringo and Reed. The coin, of course. Well, that was the last nail in that particular coffin. I better go get the sheriff. You okay, boy? You look a mite shook up. Uh, Dwight, maybe you best go home. Uh, young Eisenhower here is leaving for West Point tomorrow. Uh, he shouldn't get caught up in something like this. I think I might head out myself at this juncture. Unless you want to stop me, Jack. No, sir, huh, Mr. Graves. So where are you going now? Now that you had your revenge? Doesn't really matter, does it? as I have sold my soul for it, and will never again walk with those I have lost.